Alrighty then, folks. Hello there, and welcome back to some more SD Gundam Two Generations Cross Race. So we have done the underwater stage, I think. Let me check. This one has an underwater too. Um, I'm not gonna be too drastic about what I was gonna do, but there is one thing I am going to change. I've done a couple of missions since then. Um, yeah, they're all, you know, nine, ten-ish. Eugene is seven for raisins. Even though they've all been on the same missions. Um, I'm just going to change the blue frame then. I was thinking I was going to change a bunch of people. But I think just blue frame is fine. Um, so there's the full weapon again. This is what I was going to turn the last one in before I got the underwater one. Or the second L, which is the better version. And that turns into the L dragon and some other stuff. We're going to go full weapon frame though. Um, we trade you for anything useful yet. Ooh. Or that, which we already have. And can I exchange you for anything interesting? <laughs> the Exia Repair. Oh, the Repair 2. Um, I think for now we'll stay the same. After this mission, though, we'll do a full upgrade. All right, so we have Rao with Charisma. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. Um, so we got Rao with Charisma. We got Izak with Control, which in extends the uh, commander's area by one. We want that. Mechanic, Analyst, yeah. Nothing important. I believe this is going to be the Alaska battle. From what I was told, this one's incredibly freaking long. It's also the introduction of the uh, Freedom. So, Ixo. Oh, yeah, if you don't remember, in the last episode, Nickel died. Nobody else. Just Nickel. Nickel.今までの甘さを悔やみ、自らの手で、キラヤマトを葬ることを決意して、彼は単身最後の決戦へと臨む。Nickel liked to play the piano. Tekie no Hangeshi Karini Moeru Ijisto. Honore no Tsumi o Satori, Tekan o Motte o Sensur Strike. Sono Kinko o Uchiaburbeku, Strike no Engo ni Haita, Sky Graspao. Ijis wa Imaima Shige ni Uchiotosu. Um, I don't know if this is following the remaster or not, but he throws the shield at the Sky Grasper and it like smashes into him. It's very, very brutal. その期待には、アスランにニコルという親友がいたように、キラの親友トールが乗り込んでいた。I vaguely remember those happening at the same time, but I could just be getting that mixed up. That might explain why they didn't show it. Good thing that all happened off screen, though. I'd be very sad if Tole died on screen. お前がニコルを、ニコルを殺した! War. Uh, 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 this is war. It's a Jared quote, by the way. <laughs> he says it every time you do the L, the L two oh move in oh Gundam vs. Eight Gundam. <laughs> so if you look into their eyes, you see how their pupils are all small. That's because they're in seed mode. Yeah, they both are super coordinators. ヒゲキナノダロカ。だが、そのようなことばでは、決して沈まらぬ少年たちの劇場は、悲しき人の末、膨れ上がる抜抗に溶け込んでいった。All right, so Atherin turns the Aegis into the mobile armor mode, latches onto the strike, which there's a hole in the cockpit, and detonates.
uh, missing in action. Till we see the body, they're not KIA. And they'll probably be set at MIA KIA because you'll never find the bodies. to ditch the Earth Federation's most top-of-the-line prototype. Doesn't matter if he's dead or not. That, to uh, that prototype was goddamn expensive and you're getting it back. It it it's like they're under siege or something. Oh, I'll tell you this now. This one's probably going to be 45 minutes of them talking. And then a really long battle that takes about two hours. I know they're trying to make Nataro just be like an asshole because that's how she is. She's serious, air quotes. My but, like, she feels really distant now for some reason. Like, she just really wants to get back to Alaska. Not she actually cares about, you know, the Archangel and the Strike. She kind of just wants to ditch it and leave it to Zaft. Maybe she's a spy. Or maybe she's trying to save herself. I'm not quite sure. He's wearing Watfield's cloak. They also recover the Aegis, don't they? And like, Phantom Pain gets a hand of it and they rebuild it or something weird like that. I know Phantom Pain like, builds recreations of all of them and makes them better. Instead of, you know, developing the better ones they already have, but... We'll get to that soon. I think the druggies appear this, either this mission or the next mission. Because they'll probably be dead by the time we're off the planet. Or no, they fight, they die at the final battle, don't they? No, it's the extended from season two that die before they leave the planet. I think Stella's the last one to die. Stella's the four of destiny. Yeah, they had this like, you know, episode long expedition on a an island where basically they got naked and pointed guns at each other they were warming up or something i don't i, I honestly don't really remember what does orb want with me why didn't they just leave me out on that island to die a slow and painful death He's dead, boyo. And again with the guns. Sorry about that. Uh, I was checking my work phone. They don't know that they're related yet. You won't find that out till after this arc.
Yeah, he was my best friend. Thick as thieves. Again, it's not murder. He just killed him. It's fine. You were both soldiers on the opposite side. You didn't ambush him in a park and stab him while his friends were away. It was a fair fight. It wasn't murder. You know, all those people you killed in Africa? You murdered them too, then. Nickel. He loved to play the piano. <laughs> they did it. He was only 15, and he loved to play the piano. You killed your best friend, but he killed your friend who liked to play the piano. Seriously, they mention it like four times in the same conversation in the anime. They didn't do it here and I'm kind of sad, which I think that means they're following the remaster. It's been a little while since I meet, uh, since I watched the remaster. Yeah, they captured the buster. Yeah, but is it really assault if you don't kill him? It was just some advanced interrogation techniques. Plus, you know, you say the 15-year-old girl just slapped him and then it's fine. No one will care because he's a big pansy for not liking being slapped by a 15-year-old girl. To be fair, this is a very good reaction to your first time, having somebody you know die. It's just like, they're really dead. Then you get used to it, and eventually it's just like, oh yeah, that sucks. Which, it's kind of sad to say you got used to it, but it, it happens. Hey, they're fat uncles made by Zaft. So, slightly slim fat uncles. I don't actually know what they're called in this one. Fat uncles are the UC version, which are kind of comically, like, rotund. They're bubbly, even. Because Xeon developed them when they didn't know about air resistance. I.e. the artist or the designer who had originally draw uh, drawn the thing didn't know about air resistance, I guess? But yeah, they're all, like, bubbly and evil-looking. It's great.
i.e. you'll be transported back home, away from the combat. He already was the pilot of a state-of-the-art suit, remember? You stole it. Yeah, so Lacus's father, Patrick... Klein? Yeah, Klein. I was about to say Zala. Uh, was it Patrick? No, it was Patrick Zala. I forget what Lacus's father's name was. But he got demoted because of his, like, let's have peace stance. And Patrick, who's a, you know, coordinator supremacist or whatever, won. So now they're going on full genocide war. And they're building a laser that'll literally destroy all life in like a 600 square mile radius of the earth. And he's wondering why firing that at the earth is a bad thing. This is Jabro of the Seedland, except for... Uh, apparently they knew where it was the whole time, but they have a big gun, so they want to salt it. Also, notice yellow. Well, you guys lost it because you brought it to a neutral colony instead of building it here. Hey, Azrael, the leader of Blue Cosmos at this point. He's named after, I believe, the God of Knowledge? For a pure and beautiful world. That means they're part of Blue Cosmos, which is a, a natural supremacist group who wants to absolutely destroy all things about genetic engineer uh, genetic engineering, except for they use it themselves. Though it's mostly side content that you know that they used it themselves. In the original series, it was never mentioned. Though I think of the remaster, they might have hinted at it. Uh, you guys are already in Alaska. Notice he said Captain Romeus. She was a lieutenant, remember? Or did they get promoted when they meet, met the 8th Fleet? I don't remember, to be honest. I know Kira got a rank and Lavlaga got promoted. Maybe Romeus did too and they just didn't mention it.
She's a morale piece. They did horrible things to her family. Now she wants vengeance. And she's gonna get vengeance. Against her own people. And now we get to the weird part. Kira's still alive. He only had a mobile suit explode like a five kiloton bomb within 30 meters of him. That's fine, right? Oh, don't worry. The shielding on the pierced part of the strike allowed him to survive and, you know, not lose any hands or arms or fingers or toes or legs or his entire head. And Lachis was responsible. Oh, okay, Kleinson, got it. I was like, Miss Klein? Oh, right. Well, son does technically mean like miss or mister. You don't really use it. it it's not really like that. Yes, yes, you should. But this is the first time you'll survive death when you should have died. Um, so, I don't know if they'll ever bring it up in the series or not, but the manga that was running alongside this was the Astro manga, and uh, Lo just happened to be nearby when it all happened. He pulled Kira out and got him over to the dude who runs the orphanage. I can't remember his name, but he's going to come up any minute now. And he healed him and sent him up into space, because that man is more connected than everyone else in the universe, apparently. He may or may not be a god. We don't know. It, we probably know, and I just don't. But I haven't really looked into it. But in America, the manga didn't come out for another four years, so none of us knew. That's why a lot of people make fun of it, is just because, like, they expected a bunch of stuff we had no idea about. It kind of made sense if you're also reading the manga, or if you're in Japan, like, maybe your friend read the manga and told you, and... You had this, like, giant realization, and you went out and bought all the copies of the manga you could. But it didn't happen here. Are you against us or are you with us? Because we'll kill you if you're against us. Don't worry, I too will do something crazy. I will help you steal a top secret prototype. Yes. Gundam. <laughs> X1OA、フリーダムです。でも、ガンダムの方が強そうでいいですわね。これはなぜ僕に今のあなたには必要な力と思いましたので、思いだけでも力だけでもダメなのです。Strength, Until they try to murder you because your dad's a dirty traitor. So there's a theory that uh, her father is just a really smart natural, but he's not actually a coordinator at all. And that's why he was, you know, trying to get peace with the naturals, because he knew, like, there isn't any difference between a natural and a coordinator. While Lachis's mother was either a coordinator or even a natural herself. And Lachis was the only coordinator in the family. There's a bunch of theories about everything, though, so take it with a grain of salt. Though the thing about Flay and her father was actually from the book. Which, the book in this one, instead of being written by Tomino, because he didn't really write the series, a couple of other people did. 
It was written by yet a third person who really, really liked Blackus. And that's why I make fun of L-Chan on occasion, because the dude, like, gushed and gushed over her every freaking book. But they're a pretty good retelling, except for they have a couple of weird, like, added-in things that I consider canon just because they're in the book, but they probably shouldn't be. Like, you know, Flay's hair not actually being naturally that color and having it genetically engineered in the womb, and her dad having, um, pure crystal eyes and shit like that. You know, just stuff that is impossible. He's going to California base, the second largest base in, in the U.S. Oh no, are they planning a trap? Like they're gonna trap all the Zaft people inside the base and then detonate it and kill everyone? That would be evil and mean. They would never do that, would they? Would they? Fifteen. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-four. Those last three had Kyugui's in command. Really? They were going to attack your mass driver when your base was so undefended? Oh god, goons! Oh, and... Znose? Still the ZNOs. We can't expect them to over. Or they, we can't let them overrun this base. We can't even let them inside. We're not letting them inside. We're preparing for takeoff. Yeah, I figured this. 